here tonight. The Lord, we come to praise Him for a little bit because God's been good to us. We feel like the Lord has used you to align us, to speak to us. But right now, we're going to prepare our hearts before you come. In this building tonight, we come from different places, different circumstances, sicknesses, things that people have been through. Sister Amy Melvin back there that has been through heart surgery and sicknesses. And Sister Amy, the devil did everything he can, but you're here. I rejoice with you. Sister Bounds and I rejoice with you. Hey, hey, look at somebody say no weapon. No weapon. No weapon. What the devil meant for bad, the Lord's going to turn it for good. I've got a testimony out of that. No weapon. He sent enemies into my life, but no weapon. He, he put obstacles in my life, but no weapon. He put lions after me, but no weapon. He put Goliaths in front, but no weapon. It was fed to the lions, but the lions couldn't eat it. Come on, it was put in a fiery furnace, but the fire couldn't burn it. The water couldn't drown. I'm the church. I said, I belong to God. He can't stop us. Turn to two or three people and say, you're going to make it. Come on, look at your neighbor. Say, you are going to make it. Somebody shout, yeah. Going for a little hell, no weapon. I'm trying to quit, by the way. You better run up here. No weapon. Years of holding me back, but no weapon. No weapon. Devil, devil should have taken me out while he had me, but no weapon. I'm about to change my world. I'm about to go into a new... No weapon. Hallelujah. Come here, Sister Esther Curtis. Run up here with Pastor. The devil would have loved to have taken you out. But no weapon. She said, I'm not running. That's why I just said, come here now. No weapon. I look back and your brother Tim's here today. And on Sundays, brother Jeff is with you. Your brother Eric is with you. And this past Sunday, her dad was with her, amen. No weapon. She said, I'm gonna reach my family. You can't have my family. I wish some dad or mom would say, you can't have my family. No weapon. The devil's a liar. Man, look at your neighbor say, the devil's a liar and his pants are on fire. Glory. Hey, man, God's not only going to save you, he's going to save them that hear you. Clap your hands and praise him. No weapon. Come on, you young people, the devil can't take you out. You're going to take him out. That's the problem. You're going to take the enemy out. No weapon. Hey, I say we have our best year. I say let it be the best year we've ever had in our family. The best year of the anchor. Man, the God's going to come. Man, one more time, it just feels good to say it. Look at your neighbor and say, the devil's a liar. And his pants are on fire. Glory to God. My, my goodness. You can say it one more time if you want to. That feels good. The devil, the devil tried it. All the kids going to say, uh-huh. He knows where he's going. That's why he fights you, because he knows where you're going. I feel like the devil said, why'd you come two minutes before our time? Because we know our time. Rapture's coming. We're getting out of this old crazy world. Hallelujah. Amen. I want you to I want you to lift your hands and I want you to tell the Lord I'm sorry for every doubting moment I'm sorry for any questions I've had as a saint moments of struggle and emotional disconnections 
chaos and moments confusion that I made decisions that weren't pleasing to you and I'm asking you tonight to forgive me. But Lord, this one thing I know and everybody say this one thing I know. I belong to you. And you're my God. And I receive forgiveness tonight. I accept your mercy over my life. And from this day forward, I'm going to trust you that you're going to bring me all the way home. Amen. Tonight, oh God, I want to hear what you're saying to me through the man of God. Hallelujah. It's not only going to save me, it's going to save them that hear me. If you're with your family, somebody that you're with, just lay your hand on their shoulder and just say, in Jesus' name, be healed. I'm healed tonight. Come on, pray that prayer. I'm healed tonight. Hallelujah. Brother Wade, if you'll come. Amen. Hallelujah. The miraculous of God is in this room. The Lord sent a man of God to confirm and speak. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We here believe that you are a gift to us. The Bible says that he gives gifts unto men. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. This church loves the ministry. They love God. And when you come to this pulpit, we don't just let anybody up here. We believe that God sends men, ministers, to us to edify us. And we believe that when you do whatever God has you to do, we're going to be strengthened, we're going to have direction. We're going to have clarity. And when, they, when you preach, they believe the power of the amen is to receive every promise in the book. Amen. If you believe in the amen, praise God. Amen. The promises of the Lord are yea. He's the yea. If you want to receive it, you've got to say amen. How many believe, Brother Wade, is a gift from God to us? Amen. We welcome you tonight. Take your time. Take your liberty. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's do that under the Lord. Can we do that? Praise the Lord. Man, I feel a prophetic utterance in this house. Come on, somebody praise the Lord. There's the, there's the angels of the Lord are in this house. Somebody's going home with a miracle tonight. Somebody's going home with a major breakthrough. Somebody's going home with some understanding that I wasn't just going through what I was going through just to be going through it. But his purpose, praise God, praise God. And uh, man, look at your neighbor and tell him, I'm glad you're here tonight. Tell them I wouldn't want to have church without you. That's right. I wouldn't want to have church without you. Church is not the same if you're not here. Mm. The Lord said concerning Merari, he said, that was one of the sons of Levi. He said, now Merari, um, you're going to be in charge of the structure of the tabernacle. And he said, you're going to be in charge of that. And that means you're in charge of the tent poles. You're in charge of the sockets, the boards. And the pens and Merari it doesn't seem how insignificant you think it might be all the pieces are necessary for my glory to show up well praise God that's why when I had you look at your neighbor say I wouldn't want to have church without you 
is because if they're missing, there's a piece of what God could do that's going to be missing. So I want you to look at them one more time and say, I don't want to have church without you. I don't want to have church without you because when you're here, it adds something. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Well, I give honor tonight to all of you wonderful people. And I have counted it a great privilege and honor to be here with you. I don't know if you feel it, but I feel a, a prophetic undercurrent in this service. And in just a moment, the Lord is going to release some words upon this church. Mm. Praise the Lord. And I'm excited about it. And I give honor to all of you. Thank you for allowing me to come. And again, thank you for all your hospitality. I want to give honor to the bishop of this house. I thank the Lord for Brother Aaron Bounds, a man of God. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. And uh, I give honor to his family. I think very highly of them. And <clears throat> hallelujah. Pastor Cody, I love you and I appreciate you and all the daughter work pastors and churches. Uh, I uh, came in tonight, my good friend, a powerful man of God, Vinny Azzolini is here tonight, and I'm honored to see him and be in service with him. Uh, your pastor is not just, um, just another pastor. Your pastor is an apostle of God. I don't say that because he's here. I say that if I wasn't here, but he is an apostle of God and has great apostolic authority. I leaned over to Pastor Cody uh, a few minutes ago and I asked him, I said, uh, how many daughter works do you have? And I think he said to me, seven, seven daughter works. But the Lord spoke to me and said, there's going to be 10 daughter works. So, y'all better get ready. I said, y'all better get ready. Y'all better get ready. Because something's getting ready to take place. Now, I know you're standing, so I will try to... Um, now, y'all could just be seated. I can read while you're seated, if that's okay. Because uh, it's 742 and I don't intend to uh, be long here tonight. But man, I feel the angelic in this building. And I'm not, I, I don't worship angels, but I have asked the Lord to loose them into this service. And the Lord, and so has your pastor and the ministry of this church has asked the Lord to loose the ministry of the angelic into this building. And, it, and the Lord has done that. But the Lord has begun to deal with me about changing the way that we talk and changing our vernacular. And I don't know if you realize it or not, but that Bible you hold in your hand is not some archaic document that we reference or, uh, for historical reasons. That Bible you hold in your hand is a living document. It is a unfolding document. And uh, that's, I love the word of God because God's word 
has never, it never loses its ability to speak. His word will speak when you don't think there's a word to be had. Uh, when a shout won't get you out. A word in due season will deliver you in just a moment. Uh, well, I got a couple of you believe that. Let me try that again. Uh, his word will deliver you in just a moment. When, when a song can't get it done, his word will come to me and will get me out of anything that I'm in. Devil, I want you to know here tonight, no matter what you've tried to put on my mind, no matter what you've tried to afflict me with, I have a word from the Lord that says, I am the Lord thy God that healeth thee. No matter what you try to put on me, no matter what you've tried to afflict my family with, I have a word from God that says he sent his word to heal them. He sent his word to heal them. Somebody just look at your neighbor and tell them the word of God can take care of it. The word of God can take care of it. The reason why I praise God like I do, I can't run like I've seen some of you run here tonight. Uh, if you see me running, you better get to running because something's on fire. Uh, yeah. If I'm running, you better get to running because something's messed up. But I want you to know I cannot run like many of you can. But I want you to know the Bible says that in the book of Malachi, the Lord said to him, he said to, through Malachi, he said, you tell Israel, I am the Lord thy God and I change not. But this next part is what really gets me excited because he says the next part, therefore you sons of Jacob are not consumed. He said the mere fact that my word doesn't change and I don't change, the mere fact that you're still here is a testimony that my word does not lie. Yeah, so I'd like to tell hell here tonight, you tried to get me to change my mind about what God said about me, but I got news for you here tonight, God's already confirmed his word too many times. And the fact that I'm breathing is a testimony that God's not done with me yet. And I'm going to tell this church right now, come hell or high water, come COVID or anything else, this church is still in the will of God. Ooh. Look at your neighbor and tell him God's still got something planned for you. Uh, God's still got something planned for you. Uh, you're alive right now because God's still got plans for you. Uh, if God didn't have no plans for you, you'd have been dead 10 years ago. Uh, if God didn't have no plans for your life, uh, you'd be in an asylum, asylum right now. Uh, but God's got some... And God's word never lies. It never lies, and they, I, I didn't Google this, but please, so please forgive me if, if I'm a little off, I don't, it's not intentional, but somebody said that 25% at least of your Bible is dedicated to prophetic or future events. Whew. About 25% of your Bible is dedicated to uh, proclaiming what shall be. So when God brings to you a prophetic word, he doesn't bring it to you based on where you currently are. He releases that prophetic word based on where he currently plans to take you. Ooh. 
He releases that word based on where he plans to take you. So don't get bogged down with where you are currently. If you've got a word over your life, that means God plans to take you up out of where you currently are. Uh, look at your neighbor and tell him God's got some plans for you. That's right. God's got some plans for you. God's got some plans for you. And so 25, about 25% of your Bible is prophetic. It's prophetic as in foretelling, foretelling future events. But I have a small problem, and the problem is, is that we're always talking about what God is going to do instead of what God is currently doing. Well, hallelujah. God's going to bless me someday. <clears throat> God's going to help me someday. God's going to heal me one day. When God would like to sometimes, he would like to bring, uh, he would like to take you and bring you from your someday into today. And so while I was, while I'm thinking upon that, there was, there's this beautiful passage of scripture that I think would be worth uh, taking a look into and the, because the Lord has something prophetic to loose in this house tonight. Uh, the Psalm of David, Psalm 126, they call it the Psalm of Ascent. They call it the Psalm of Going Up. Uh, they call it the Psalm of Coming Up Out Of. Because what would happen was they would go, they would go down and then they would, they would, uh, when they got ready to go up to the house of the Lord, they would recite these psalms. They called them the Psalms of Ascent. Well, Psalm 126, is this all right? Psalm 126 uh, begins to, now in the King James, they, they tried their best to get it right, but they, they, put some stuff in there and because some of those writers did not believe that Israel was going to ever be again what it was. Uh, and so Psalm 126 says that, now here's the way it reads in King James, when the Lord turned uh, with an ED on the end of it, when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Well, ladies and gentlemen, they got it, they, the translators didn't get it t uh, totally correct because that's not how it reads in the original Hebrew. Uh, would you like to know how it reads in the original Hebrew? Uh, which is how your Old Testament is originally written. So he says, uh, it doesn't say, it doesn't say turned in the past tense. So here's what it says. When the Lord turns again the captivity of Zion, we are like those that dream. Uh, yeah. So what God was saying was, now, uh, Anchor Church, I want you to get it. Now, God takes, because the enemy, because the Israel would not be obedient to God, uh, because Israel would not obey the laws of God, uh, they would not adhere to uh, the uh, statutes of God God said I'm tired of it I'm tired of you not doing what I say I'm tired of you not honoring my release because God said at the end of seven years you are to declare a release he said at the end of every so often you gotta let some stuff go Every so often, you got to let some stuff go out of your life. I know so-and-so has owed you $20 for 30 years, but at some point, you got to let it go. Oh, 
oh, y'all ain't going to say nothing about that right there, but I'm coming anyway. At some point, you got to say, you know what? I've held on to that long enough. Maybe the reason I'm suffering like I am is not because of the devil after all. Maybe it's because of something I wouldn't let go of. Maybe I got mad at the man of God, and I've been mad for 10 years. Well, I come to tell you it's time to let it go. Well, did you hear what I just said? It's time to let some stuff go. Some of you have been holding stuff against family members for a long time. But it's time to let some stuff go. Because God said the minute you let go of it, I got some stuff I'm going to let go of. The Well, praise the Lord. Aren't you glad God's not holding stuff over your head? Aren't you glad God's not beating you up over stuff? Aren't you glad God's not got you in bondage over a sin you committed 10 years ago? But the minute you ask God to forgive you, he wiped the slate clean. Well, God said, Israel, I want you to let some stuff go. Somebody shout, let it go, let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Let that anger go. Let that offense go. Let that hatred go. Let it go. He said, because every once in a while, you've got to let some stuff go. Every once in a while, you've got to just go to God in prayer. So you know what? My prayers are being hindered because of this. I can't get a prayer through. Well, the reason is, is because you haven't let something go. Oh, yeah, I'm not going to camp out there, but I'm just going to tell you, God said, God said, I want you to, at the end of seven years, let the slaves go. If somebody owes you some money, let them go. If, if, if somebody owes you something, get rid of it because I, I can't bless you as long as you're holding on to it. Your crops can't grow as long as you're holding on to it. Well, somebody's being quiet, but uh, I won't camp out here because I, I, I really feel the Holy Ghost wants to lose something in this house. Uh, but I want you to let it go. Uh, look at your neighbor. Tell him one more time. I'm letting it go. Come on. Tell him I'm letting it go. It's not going to hold me another day. I'm not going to have ulcers another day because of something I won't let go. I'd like to tell you right now, you don't have indigestion because of something your wife cooked, sir. It's because of something you refuse to release. Well, I better not. Uh, you don't have, uh, ma'am, you don't stay up all night with heartburn because, uh, because of something you ate for lunch. Uh, you've been having that same heartburn for days uh, because you've got something in your crawl that you won't let go. But I hear the Holy Ghost saying, uh, if you'll let it go here tonight, uh, there's something the heavens are about to release in your house. I just said I said if you'll let it go tonight there's something going to be released in your house if you'll let it go tonight God's going to open up the heavens in your house and you're not going to be able to contain let it go and God said you've got to so because they didn't God sent a prophet by the name of Jeremiah and said, you're going into bondage for 70 years. You're going into bondage. And somebody came down and smote the prophet in the face and said, you do falsely prophesy in the name of the Lord. Uh, how many remembers that? You, false, you prophesy falsely in the name of the Lord. And he said, uh, he said, you're going into bondage. I don't care what you do to me. God said you're going because you would not declare a release. You wouldn't let some stuff go. And you didn't, haven't done that for 490 years. Now imagine holding on to something for 490 years. And God said, I'm so sick of idolatry. I'm so sick of all that. Don't get down to the dumps. We're going somewhere in the Holy Ghost. Uh, I'm so sick of that that I'm going to scatter you to the four winds of the earth. 
But ladies and gentlemen, I want you to know something. God tells Jeremiah chapter 16, verse number 14. Uh, he tells Jeremiah, I want you to pick up the pen, Jeremiah. I don't want you to uh, get so settled where you are. I don't want my people to get so comfortable. Oh, they're going to be here 70 years. You just mark that down. Uh, you're, they're going to be here 70 years. Just mark that down. But I want you to pick up the pen, Jeremiah, and I want you to write these words down. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that it shall no more be said, the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. He said, uh, what he said, they're going to stop talking about the exodus from Egypt. Now, God, that don't make much sense. They've been talking about that for 4,000 years. But God said, oh, yeah. But I want you to write another verse here, Jeremiah. But this is what they're going to say instead. The Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north and from all the lands where he had driven them. And I will bring them again into their land and when I saw that the Holy Ghost began to deal with me and he said Bobby I want you to go I feel this was the Lord the Lord sent me here to prophesy to this church tonight to tell this church that what's getting ready to happen there's getting ready to be a release of backsliders in this church there's getting ready to be a release of prodigals in this church that I'm prophesying to this church right now. There's getting ready to be a release of the prodigals in this region. And this building ain't going to be able to handle them. And another building like this ain't going to handle them. And another building like that ain't going to be able to handle them. I don't know if some of you heard me or not, but that's some of your family members. And I come to tell some of you right now, it doesn't matter how much, how long they've been on drugs. It don't matter how long they've been in alcohol. God said, I'm getting ready to stir up the winds. I wish somebody give God a praise about that right there. Did you hear what I just said? I'm prophesying to this church right now that you don't have a big enough plan to house the... Now, I've heard from the Lord. I've heard from the Lord. Now, watch. He said, I'm going to release a harvest of backsliders into this church that the, that the day of Pentecost will pale in comparison to it. God is going to have. Well, Brother Wade, how can you say that? Because God said they're not going to talk about the day of Pentecost anymore. They're going to talk about when God brought the families up out of the north. When God brought them up out of. I thank God for the day of Pentecost. I thank God for Azusa Street. I thank God for all those other revivals. But I came to prophesy that the world is going to give up my family. I wish I could preach like I feel it, but I came to tell you in this building, the addictions are going to let go of my family. The drugs are going to let go of my family. The alcohol is going to let go of my family. Somebody shout, let them go. Let them go. Let them go. I prophesy to every corner of this city, you've got to let the backsliders go. I prophesy to every corner of this county, you gotta let them go. I honestly thought somebody would be more excited about that. Because I got news for you. God said, all these past experiences are gonna pale in comparison. Yeah. 
Ooh, we're not going back to the mountain of Azusa. We're not going back to the mountain of Pentecost. I'm thankful for them, but they have no, they don't have, they don't hold a candle to what's coming right now. Brother Wade, Brother Wade, how can you prophesy that? Because I got Bible for it. Because he said, I'm going to bring them back to their land. I'm going to bring them right back where they started. That drug addiction thinks he, they got a hold of them. That, that habit thinks they got a hold of them. But I got news for you right now. I tell you, the wind is blowing. Ooh, somebody give God a radical praise in this house right now. I'm going to tell this church right now. God's not going to bless you. He is blessing you right now. My deliverance is not past tense. It's right now. God is turning my captivity. Oh, somebody shout, he's turning it right now. He's turning it. He's turning it. Woo. Head up. He's turning it right now. And then he picks it up in the book of Ezekiel. And he says this. He says, not one of them will be left behind. Oh, my. I, I ain't got nothing sad to tell here tonight. I'm going to tell you right now. God said, the psalmist David said, when God turns our captivity it's going to be so powerful. It's going to be like we're living in a dream. You ever had a dream so good you didn't want to wake up from? Praise God. Well, God said, get ready. Because I'm going to bring this church. He's got them in a territory right now. See, we've never, we don't understand. We don't understand true abundance. Oh. We, we sometimes we don't understand true abundance. We think of true abundance as a hundred dollars. We think true abundance is a stimulus check. Hello. Woo! So I can find me buy me a seventy-five inch screen and a and a PS five. Hello. So I can buy me, so I can buy me, ooh, that, that, one, that one thing I've been wanting, ooh, when that stimmy drops, whoa, I'm going to dance in abundance. Well, praise the Lord. Well, that's not, that's not the kind of abundance God's talking about. Well, that's nice, and I'm thankful for it, but I'm talking about the kind of abundance where you don't have room enough to put it. Oh, man. Okay, that, that. I'm talking about God saying, I'll bless you so much. Hey, let me help me help you with something. I, I may have told it in this church, but there was a man in Mississippi, uh, Brother Vinny, there was a man in Mississippi that contracted a job and went $495,000 in the hole. Now, I'm not that smart, but anyway, he did it. And... He went $495,000 in the hole. You know, God's trying to expand our measure in this church. <clears throat> God's trying to change the measure of what we can receive in this church. Is that okay? God's trying to change your measure. Yeah, he's trying to not dimension your measure because God don't deal with you by dimensions. He deals with you by measure. Some of you don't know it, but you're going through a, you thought the storm you're going through is immeasurable. But I got a word for you here tonight that before you went through that storm, God measured how far it was going to go. Uh, God measured how far it was going to go. I'm going to say it one more time. Before you went into that storm, God
God measured how far it was going to go. And when it's filled, it's going no further. It's going no further. I had, a, I had my daughter. My daughter, my wife called me on the phone. Can I, can, is this okay? My wife called me on the phone, and, and I, it was a few years ago, and she said she was crying hysterically, and she told me, she said, Bobby, she said, she said, uh, I, I, something's wrong. You got to come home. I said, what's wrong? She said, I took Madison to the doctor, and when I took her to the doctor, I took her to the doctor. Uh, they said they found a mass on her hip. And I said, and something instantly came over me, Bishop Bounds. Something came over me. It was the gift of faith that came over me. And I told my wife, I stopped her mid-sentence. And I told her, I said, Jody, I want you to know something right now. Our daughter does not repeat does not have cancer. My daughter does not have cancer. She says, how do you know that? I said, I'll tell you how I know. I said, because about a month ago, I had watched the terminology now. I had a prophet call me, and he said, Bobby, you're going to go through a small storm. It was measured. It was measured. A small storm. Some of you have let the devil, uh, some of you magnify what you're going through greater than what it is. Some of you have allowed the enemy to magnify that trouble you're going through. But I came to prophesy to you in the name of the Lord. It's a small storm and it's about to come to an end. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost in here right now. I said it's about to come to an end. The devil made you believe it wasn't going to end, but I come to tell you the expiration date is up on it, and it's coming to an end because it was a... Somebody shout it was a small storm, just a small storm, just a small storm. And, and so, uh, ladies and gentlemen, my, I told my wife, and I said, you give, the daughter, you give the phone to my daughter. You give the phone to Madison. And I said to Madison, I said, you do not have cancer. In fact, I don't want the word cancer mentioned in that room because she ain't going to have cancer. And I said, second of all, when I finish this, well, Bobby, you're insensitive. Bobby, you just, you know, you just don't have no feelings. I got news for you. I got tons of feelings. Just look at me. Uh, I got tons of feelings. I got a lot of feelings. Just look at me. About 252 pounds of them. Uh, yeah, I got a lot of feelings. But ladies and gentlemen, when I've heard from God, my feelings have got to get out the door. When I hear from God, my feelings have got to get out of here. You got to get rid of those feelings. You got to detach yourself from those lies. Bobby, you're insensitive. No, I'm not. I heard from God. And I, to, and I told my wife, I said, second of all, when I get out of this meeting, I'm going to get on that plane, and you're going to pick me up at the Bush Intercontinental Airport. I'm coming out Terminal C. Oh, uh, yeah. You come there, you get there and pick me up. And when we get there, I said, I'll tell you what's going to happen. We're going to go and get the best meal that money can buy. And she said, are you crazy? She said, why are we going to do that? I said, because we're about to celebrate what God's going to do. You know what some of y'all been doing? You've been hiding in a corner somewhere, and you ain't been celebrating what God's doing and what God's going to do. Maybe some of you are waiting on permission to do it. But in the name of Jesus, I give you permission to go ahead and celebrate in advance what God has planned. <laughs> Woo! I told my wife, I said, we're going to go down there. Woo, I'm having a lot of fun right now. I feel good. There's a lot of liberty in this house. Somebody's going to take a miracle home with them tonight. 
You know why? Because you're about to have a meal at the expense of your trial. Oh, yeah. And so my wife came to pick me up. I went through baggage claim. I picked up that, that roller bag. I went out there. My wife, she grabbed me. I, I let her get her cry in. I wasn't insensitive. I, I held her while she cried. And then I dried her face. I said, now, baby, we're going to Papa Seafood House. Uh, yeah, we're going to get the appetizers. We're going to get the dessert, and we're going to get the salmon Alexander. Uh, yeah, and I said I don't know. Uh, well, are you hungry yet? Uh, yeah, and we're going to get the salmon Alexander, and you're going to get whatever you want to eat, cause I plan on eating all of my salmon. Because when I celebrate, I go all in. And ladies and gentlemen, we did that. We got the appetizers. We got the desserts. And then we got out in the parking lot of the hospital. And we began to praise God. Oh, we begin to praise God. We begin to praise God. And begin to celebrate in advance what God said he was going to do. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to report to you today. The next morning they came in that hospital room and they said, we don't know what we saw, but your daughter don't have no cancer. And I'm going to tell some of you right now, you're not going to die. You're going to live. Oh, somebody praise him right now according to the measure that you believe. I'm waiting on somebody else right now. Woo! Somebody shout, it's just a small storm. It's just a small storm. But it's going to end the night. It's going to end right now. Because I'm celebrating. I know some of you can't get a hold of that right now. Because the devil's magnified it so big. He's magnified your problem more than you have magnified God. But I come to tear that down right now. In the name of Jesus. God is bigger than your waves. He's... That man, I, I, this is what I'm talking about. This church is about to change measures. Watch. That man went $495,000 in the hole, but he kept right on coming and kept right on being faithful to God. He didn't fall out with the pastor. He didn't say, Pastor, I think I'll take a break for six months. No. He kept right on coming and kept right on praising God. And kept right on pushing. And he said, I wouldn't quit on God if it meant my life. I ain't quitting on God. Because I realize this ain't the end. Y'all hear me. Let me tell you something. That man went for, kept on doing that. And one day, his pastor walked off the platform. And the a prophetic utterance came upon the man of God. And the man of God looked right at that man and said, God is going to work on that today. And God did go to work on that. And in 90 days, God wiped out $495,000 in 90 days. You know what happened? That man went through the pressing. That man went through the shaking. And he kept right on being faithful with it. And God said, okay, try some running over in your life. Try a little running over. I wonder what God could pay off in this church in 90 days. I'll, I'll, wait, I'll wait on that. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say it again. I wonder what God could pay off in this church in 90 days. I wonder what kind of miracle could be loosed in your house within the next 90 days. 
See, this church is walking in new territory, so it has to change its measure. I'm going to say it again. This church is walking in new territory, so it has to change its measure. It has to change its measure. You're being faithful with what you're in currently. You're being faithful in what you're in currently. And God said, because you're faithful in what you are currently, you're faithful in the blessing that you have currently. He said, now I can change. He said, because I don't allow waste, Sister Julian. I don't allow waste. So I have only one or two choices. Keep letting your abundance run out on the ground or change the capacity of what you can receive. And that's where this church is right now. God's not about to let your blessing run out on the ground and let it waste. God's not about to do that. You know, I was telling that same story, ma'am, in Brazil. Because, you know, God can work in Brazil. I've been there. I was telling that same story in Brazil. And there was this chick up front there. And she was up there. I was telling that story. I, I didn't even know who she was. I stepped right in front of her, stood right in front of her. And that chick was going bonkers up in there she didn't care who it offended she didn't care who liked it she didn't care whose purse she stepped on she didn't care whose toe she stepped on she didn't care and there was about 400 people in there and about 390 of them were standing there just looking at me Oh, they was going through their little ritual, but there was about 10 of them in there that was really getting a hold of God changing their measure. And that woman went to praising God and going nutso. Well, what I didn't know was her family had a $1 million debt. I'm still talking about abundance. Praise the Lord. That that woman and her family had a one million dollar had a one million dollar debt, and she went to praising God, and just I mean looked ridiculous to some folks, but she didn't care, cause see when you're desperate for God to move, you won't care what you look like. When you're desperate for God to do something, you won't care what you look like. You won't care the kind of an inconvenience it is. Because when you need a miracle, you'll go at all expense. Don't believe me? That woman with the issue of blood had that issue for 12 years. She wasn't going to go 13 years with that thing. She got on her hands and knees and could care less what people thought of her, who stepped on her, who walked on her. She made up her mind, I'm going to touch Jesus. Because this is the last resort I've got. And when I come to the house of God, I got news for you. I'm desperate and I don't care who likes it. I don't care who doesn't like it. I don't I'm going to tell some of y'all right now, it doesn't matter if it's my favorite song or not. If I got something been happening, I got to touch the hem of his garment. Is there any desperate people in this building right now? Is there any desperate people in this building right now? Is there anybody ready to change your measure? Is there anybody ready to change the measure? Well, if you're ready to change your measure, then you got to change what you've been doing. You got to. Oh, somebody better praise the name of the Lord. I feel the Holy Ghost in here right now. God's changing the measure right now. God's changing the measure of this church right now. The measure is changing. Somebody's measure is changing right now. Somebody better obey God. You better not get your emotions involved. You better get... It doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter if it's a car. It doesn't matter. It, it's whatever it is. You, you'll open your hand tonight and you'll loose it to God. God will change your measure in your house. And yeah. 
One more time, somebody better give God some praise in this house. There's some people in this room. That's right. That's, there's people laying seed on this, this altar tonight. I'm not asking for that. I didn't come pulling for that, but God's pulling on them. Somebody better obey the Holy Ghost in here tonight. You know what happened? That woman went to dancing and shouting and praising God. And I'm going to tell you what happened. I didn't say she was going to get a Cadillac. I didn't prophesy she's going to get a new house. I didn't prophesy none of that. All I said was, if you'll respond to what God's saying, God will change your measure. And that woman walked out of that building and on the way home got a phone call that God wiped out that $1 million debt. Because one act of obedience will destroy every obstacle. One act of obedience. One act of obedience. I had no idea. I got told that story. I got told that story the next night. I had no idea. So I wasn't trying for nothing. I wasn't trying to get their emotions all worked up. I just knew what God was saying. And that's what God's saying to the anchor. I'm ready to change your measure. Because uh, you're in new territory. Oh, you're in new territory. So you got to have a new measure. Somebody shout, it's time to change measures. I'm tired of operating in the same old measure. I'm tired of operating in the same old capacity. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of operating in the same old way. Because God didn't put this church here to operate in the same measure. In that same church where $495,000 God wiped out in, in God wiped out in 90 days. Let me tell you something else. That church built, I mean, a phen phenomenal facility. $600,000. God changed the measure of that church. Watch. And in two years, they paid that thing down to $180,000 in a Watch, in a town that's 90% on welfare. Because when God changes your measure, you can take five loaves and two fish and feed 25,000. Mm. When God changes your measure, Brother Vinny Azzalini, He'll take five loaves and two fish and feed 25,000. When God changes your measure, he'll take all that heaviness off of you. God changes your measure. Watch that same church. I want us to lift our hands and receive this into our spirits right now. I didn't intend to preach what I'm preaching right now, but I'm in the Holy Ghost, and I'm, I'm not going to be here much longer, but I'm, I, I'm trying to help us right now because... This church has not been fitted and has not been ordained for stagnation. This church has not been fitted for stagnation. This church has been fitted for new measures. Yes. 
your family has been ordained for new measures, new measures of anointing, new measures. My God. I could go on and on, but I'm going to say something to this church. In Ezekiel 47, the Bible said that there was a river coming out from under the altar. And the Bible said that the angel of the Lord showed up with a line in his hand. And about four or five different times in the first five verses of that passage, this is what it says. And he measured. It wasn't talking about Ezekiel. Ezekiel wasn't measuring. It was God doing the measuring. It was God doing the measuring. It was God doing the measuring. And I always thought that story was about the river, young man. But that story wasn't about the river at all. It was about the attitude of Ezekiel. Because that river was going to go wherever it was going to go. But God looked at Ezekiel. And you know what? God measured and he measured. And it was to the ankles. And it was to the knees. And it was to the loins. My dear sister, the attitude of Ezekiel, I didn't. I didn't ever look at it till God pointed it out. The attitude of Ezekiel was that no matter how far God measured, Ezekiel never said no. It didn't matter what God asked for. He didn't resist when God measured. And when he didn't resist, God said, congratulations, Ezekiel. Now I'm going to take you to a place that cannot be measured. And God says, watch. And God says, if this church won't resist me when I say to go here, and this church won't resist me when I measure, and when I tell it to give, it doesn't resist me. And when I tell it to worship, it doesn't resist me. And when I tell it to move, it doesn't resist me. I will take this church to a place that cannot be measured. Are you hearing me, Anchor? God's trying to take this church to a place that cannot be measured. This church, God's trying to take you to a place that you don't measure this place by seating capacity. You're going to measure it by sending capacity. Because I'm going to tell you again, look around you. Look around you. You barely have enough seats to do anything else. You get a hold of that right there? We're already having three services on Sunday. I'm going to say it again. We're already having three services on Sunday. Look how full we are on Tuesday. You know what this tells me? God's about ready to test this church where they're running over. God's about ready to test this church where they're running over. And when he does. I'm going to say it again. God's getting ready to test this church where they're running over. God's getting ready to test this church when they're running over. And if you'll stay faithful in the running over, 
I prophesy you here tonight, there's a measure coming and it'll be waters to swim in. You won't be able to measure it. Somebody shout on that right there. Somebody praise God on that right there. <laughs> Woo. Well, Brother Wade, ain't that dangerous? It sure is. It's dangerous for hell. It's dangerous for the prince of this city. I'm going to say it again. Brother Wade, ain't that dangerous? It sure is. It's dangerous for the drug addicts. It's dangerous for the prostitutes. It's dangerous for those spirits that are holding them because they're going to let them go because the river is going out of this building and the devil can't control it. If you believe that, you ought to shout unto the Lord right where you are. I'll tell you right now, it's dangerous for cancer. It's dangerous for diabetes. It's dangerous for fibromyalgia. It's dangerous for the lame because the lame's going to walk. The dumb's going to talk. It's in here right now. It's in here right now. It's in here right now. It's hanging over your head right now. God's ready to take this church in the waters. It can swim in. Let me tell you this, and I'm, I'm going to be done. But man, I feel the Holy Ghost in here. Right, the Lord dealt with me some time ago. He said, you know what, Bobby, the problem is? He said, my people measure before they ever come in the door. They measure how much praise they're going to give. They measure how much offering they're going to give. They measure how much participation they're going to give. I'm not browbeating nobody. I'm just telling you that's what the Lord said. They, they measure it. They've already predetermined how much they're going to give in the offering, how much hand clapping they're going to do, how they, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But God said, if they won't measure me and they let me do the measuring, I promise them they don't have a measure to compare to my measure. Did you hear what I'm saying? You know what I see? I see a sanctuary three times bigger than this. You know what I see? I see a Okay, that got some of you excited because you got your calculator out and you tried to figure out how you're going to pay for what you currently got. I, did you hear what I just said? Don't measure what God said. You don't measure. God's the one doing the measuring. We don't have the property for a building three times this size. No, but God's got it. And I got news for you. You hear what I'm going to tell you? God will empty out a business so you can have that building. Don't you? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm prophesying right now. I said God will empty out a business to, so you can have the building. God will empty out the shopping mall if he has to, but he's not going to be made a liar out of. Ooh, I 
church, somebody give God a praise in this house right now. I want you to praise the Lord based on the measure you're going to. God said, I'll give you houses you didn't build. I'll give you lands you didn't work for. I plan on walking in it. Well, praise the Lord. I plan on, not, I plan on throwing my measuring a line away. Did you hear what I just said? I'm going to tell you right now. I'm going to tell you right now. There's a church uh, there's a church in Virginia and I want you to know something. God, they needed space and God emptied out the building down the road for them. No, I don't think you heard what I just said. Because I'm going to tell you something. This church is going to have a place where drug addicts can be rehabbed and delivered. And you know what's going to happen? God's going to open that door. Well, I just don't know if I want to be bogged down with that. Well, then you don't have to worry about it because God's not going to mess with you. But for those that want to get involved, the joy of the Lord. Oh, because I got to have somewhere for them to be healed. I got to have somewhere. That's it. Go ahead and praise the Lord. Somebody else get out of your seat and dance on that. Somebody else get out of your seat and dance on that right now. <laughs> when you outgrow yourself, God's got another place prepared. Brother Vinny, run down here and dance on that word right now. Run down here and dance on that word right now. When you outgrow where you currently are, God's already got a larger place prepared. When you got people turning on you at your job, just get ready. Because God's got something else at somewhere else. Oh, I just felt that right there. I said, when you, when they start running you and start stabbing you in the back at your place of employment, don't get mad. Don't react. Start dancing and shouting. Because that means your capacity is about to change. You know what, sis? I'll prove it to you. That same place that four hundred ninety-five thousand dollars got wiped out. They, they didn't have no more place to park. You know what happened? God sent a man into the pastor's office that don't even go to the church, and asked the pastor, "Can you get commercial insurance?" He said, "Well, I don't know." He said, "What are you talking about?" He said. He said, I mean, today, can you get it today? He said, now this man don't even go to the church. He said, I'm talking about today. Can you do it today? He goes, well, I guess. He goes, why? He reached in his pocket and pulled out the title deed to the shopping center across the street from the church. Oh, I'm sorry. I said, here, I can't handle it. But God told me to come down here and give it to you. I'm talking about abundance. I'm talking about abundance. I'm talking about changing the measure. The Holy Ghost is in here. I'm prophesying to this church right now. I'm 
preaching to this church right now. I'm preaching to you past your gloom and despair. I'm preaching to you past COVID-19. And guess what? The pastor told me the other day, he said, you know what, Bobby? He said, we had grown out of, we didn't know what we was going to do because we ran out of parking. God said, I'll fix that. I'll give you a shopping center so you can handle the parking. And guess what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it one more time to this church right now. Just when you think you outgrown it, God's all before you outgrow it. God's got a place prepared for you to walk into. You've not reached your cup. You, you've not outgrown God. You've not outgrown God's resources. said every backslider is coming home. That's what he said to Israel. They're all coming home. God will clean out a movie theater so this church can have it. God will clean out stadiums. God said, they're all coming home. And guess what? Right this very second, God said, I don't care if they're in Ethiopia. I don't care if they're wherever they're, where they're at. I don't care if they're in Russia. I don't care if they're in a Jordan. I don't care if they're in a, a Iraq. I don't care where they are. He said, my wind is going to begin to blow. And my spirit's going to begin to draw them. And did you know right this very second that one out of three Jews that has been scattered is at home right now and God is summoning them back to their land. And God right this very minute is summoning some backslider. He's got a hook in them and he said they're coming home. They're coming home. Can you imagine, Pastor Cody, what we would have to do if just one out of three backsliders from this region came to this church? Do you know what we'd have to do? We'd have to arrange our schedules even more. Because I'm going to tell you something. Get ready for some schedule adjustments. Because every miracle in that Bible came through the doorway of inconvenience. My God. And we've got a team in this church that's willing to go to work. We got a team in this church. Somebody shout, I'm ready to go to work. I'm ready to go to work. I'm ready to teach the Bible study. Uh, let me tell you something. Sometimes, sometimes uh, when you're an adoption agency, you got to pick up those that nobody wants. When that little child that didn't ask to be born is born and looks up for somebody just to feed it. Or there are people in families that are going through stuff they didn't ask to go through. They didn't ask to go through the abuse. They didn't ask to go through the drug addiction. They didn't ask for parents that were hooked on drugs and alcohol. But God said, I prepared a place. I prepared a sanctuary. Because they're going to come home. I raised up a midwife called the Anchor Church. 
Come on. Come on. Don't measure your response to God. Not when you're getting ready to go into waters you can swim in. God said, don't measure me, Ezekiel. You won't be able to measure me. If you say yes to me, you won't be able to measure me. You won't be able to measure where I take you. Hey, Abraham, take now thy son, thine only son, Isaac. Abraham, bring Isaac to Moriah to me. Bring him to me. Don't measure me, Abraham. Bring me Abra bring me Isaac. And he brought him. And when he got ready to offer him, God said, no. I didn't want you to kill him. I wanted to see if you would measure me when I asked. And God said, because you didn't measure me, now I'm going to take you to a place that can't be measured. You don't believe it? Look here, Abe. Look at the stars. Try counting the stars. I'll wait, Abraham. Oh, Abe, you missed one. Oh, wait, wait, don't try it. You won't be able to do it. Go over there and scoop up a handful of sand and try to count the grains of sand. He said, oh, never mind. You, there was two grains that stuck together. You're not going to be able to do it. He said, because you didn't measure me, I'm going to make your seed as the stars of the heavens. And it's the sand on the seashore, innumerable. God said, Anchor Church, you want to try to trade handfuls with me? Let's try it. Open your hand. And when you open your hand on earth, I open windows in heaven. You'll never be able to outmeasure me. You'll never be able to outmeasure me. You'll never be able to outmeasure me. There'll be no sacrifice that you could give that I won't open a portal in my kingdom that'll be double and triple and quadruple and even more than that I want you to lift your hands right now and throw your measuring line away and say God take your measuring line and measure my life now I throw my resistance away I throw it away no more resistance. He la da da mo ho kanda ya da 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 mo sandaya. No more resistance. Come on, tell God. I know we're doing, we're doing everything we can do to be cautious. I know we're doing everything we can do to be cautious in this season. I know we are. But God, you're not going to meet no resistance with me. When you measure, I'm not going to resist. When your spirit begins to move, I'm not going to resist. If you tell me to get out and go lay hands on somebody, I'll have my mask on if it's necessary. But I'm going to lay hands on the sick and they're going to recover. Come on, tell God that right now. Tell God that right now. There's no more resistance in me. No more resistance. You're measuring. You're measuring.
Take me to a place I can't control. Take me to a place I can't control the outcome. My God. I can control the outcome as long as I'm in ankle deep water. I can control the outcome as long as I'm in knee deep water. I can control the outcome as long as I'm water up to the loins. But you got to take me to a place that can't be measured. I got to go where I lose my human agenda. I got to go where I lay my will down. That's where God's trying to take the anchor right now. That's where God's trying to take the anchor to waters they can swim in. more time lift your hands and tell God no more resistance out of me no more nitpicking no more criticizing I'm just gonna get in the flow come on tell God that right now I'm not gonna be judgmental no more I'm getting in the flow I'm getting in the flow This service is yours. I've preached to you what I felt was from the heart of God. This service is yours. You do with it now what you want to do. But as for me and my house, we're not going to measure no more. As for me and my house, we're not going to measure what you want to do. Come on, that's it. This service is yours. Go after it. Right there in your seat. Go after it. If you're in this building right now and you have had any resistance towards the pull of God in any way, if you'll repent right now, you need to repent right this very second. God will take you to a place that can't be measured. Come on, young person. Don't resist the will of God. Come on, saint of God. Tell God I'm not resisting no more. I'm not resisting.